G'day. Today we're going to look at how to find the next term in a sequence of numbers. We're going to start out with the easiest ones first, the most common types of sequences we get, and then we're going to work our way up to the harder ones as we progress through the video. So let's start with this example here. We have 3, 7, 11, 15, and we're going to look at the next two numbers in this particular sequence here. Now, what we need to do when we look at a sequence and we try to work out the next numbers is we're going to look at what pattern occurs between each of the numbers as we go along. So the most common type of pattern you can have, the easiest type of pattern, is one like this. If you go from 3 to 7, you can see we've gone up by 4. From 7 to 11, we've also gone up by 4. 11 to 15, we've also gone up by 4. So in this particular sequence here, we are going up by 4. So we're going to continue to do that. 15 plus 4 is equal to 19, and 19 plus 4 is equal to 23. So any sequence like this one that goes up or down by the same amount as you go along is called an arithmetic sequence. And they're the most common, easiest types, I guess, sequences that you will get. So do you want another example? So we start with a 2, next we have an 8, then we have 14, then we have 20. What are the next two terms in this arithmetic sequence here? And I've given you the hint there, it is an arithmetic sequence because we're going up by a regular amount each time. So how much are we going up by? Well. From 2 to 8, we've gone up by 6. From 8 to 14, we've also gone up by 6. And from 14 to 20, we've also gone up by 6. So in this arithmetic sequence, we are going up by 6s. So easy. 20 plus 6 is 26. And 26 plus 6 is 32. Simple. So what about this one here? We're going to start with an 18. Then we have 14. Then we have 10. What are the next two numbers in this sequence here. So once again, let's work out what's happening between the numbers as we're going along. Okay, so as we go from 8 to 14, now we're going downwards. From 8 to 14, we've gone down by 4. And I'd always check this just to see the up and down part first. From 14 to 10, we're going down by 4. So a nice simple arithmetic sequence once again where we're going down by 4s. 10 minus 4 is equal to 6. 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. Cool. Okay, so they're arithmetic sequences. I think you got the hang of those. Let's have a look at another type of sequence. So let's start with a three. Next we have a six. Next we have a 12. Next we have 24. What are the next two numbers in this sequence? So once again, let's have a look at what's happening between the numbers, what pattern's happening between the numbers. As we go from three to six, we're going up by three. As we go from six to 12, we're going up by six. As we go from 12 to 24, we're going up by 12s. So as you can see, we're not going up by a regular amount. So the next thing to check is, is it a geometric sequence? And that's a sequence where you're multiplying by an amount. So let's do this on the bottom here. From three to six, we're multiplying by two. Three times two is equal to six. Six times two is equal to 12. 12 times two is equal to 24. This is a geometric sequence. We are multiplying to get to the next term in our sequence here. So. 24 multiplied by 2 is equal to 48, and 48 multiplied by 2 is equal to 96. So once again, any sequence where you times or divide, that's a geometric sequence. So let's have a look at another example. We start with a 2, then we have a 6, then we have 18. What are the next two numbers in this sequence here? So let's start out by seeing if we're going up by a regular amount. That is, do we have an arithmetic sequence? So as we go from two to six, you can see we've gone up by four. As we go from six to 18, we're going up by 12. Because we're going up by different amounts, this is not an arithmetic sequence. Let's see now, we've got a geometric sequence. We multiply to get the next term. So two times three is equal to six. Six times three is equal to 18. Once again, we have a geometric sequence. We're multiplying by 3. So 18 multiplied by 3 is 54, and 54 multiplied by 3 is 162. Cool. Another example? Okay, so what about this one? We start with a 1, then we have a 4, then we have a 9, then we have a 16. What are the next two terms in this particular sequence? Why don't you pause the video and give this one a go? You done that? Well... I hope you went okay, because what you're going to realize is this is neither arithmetic nor a geometric sequence. We are not either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing to get to the next term. Instead, something else is happening. 
and it's this. 1 is equal to 1 squared, that is 1 times 1. 4 is equal to 2 squared, that is 2 times 2. 9 is equal to 3 squared, that is 3 times 3. 16 is equal to 4 squared, that means the next term is going to be 5 squared, and the term afterwards is going to be 6 squared. So what are they equal to? Well, 5 squared is 5 times 5, that's 25, and 6 squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. So this is something to watch out for, another type of sequence where we have things like exponents. Do another example. So we start with 1 as the first term, next we have 8 as the second term, we have 27 as the next term, then we have 64 as the term after that, what are the next two terms. So what's going on with this one? Now think of the last example we have and just expand it out a little bit. We're not dealing with squared this time, this time we are dealing with cubed. That is 1 is equal to 1 times 1 times 1. And 8 is equal to 2 cubed, that is 2 times 2 times 2. We have 3 cubed, which is equal to 27. We have 4 cubed, which is equal to 64. So the next value is going to be 5 cubed, and the value after that is going to be 6 cubed. So respectively, 5 cubed is 125, and 6 cubed is 216. So watch out, that's the third type of series and sequences that we get here is where we're dealing with exponents. So now something else. So now let's get a little bit harder. We start with a 2, and we have a 3, we have a 5, next we have an 8, next we have a 12. What are the next two numbers in this particular sequence? Now, I'm going to give you a little hint if you pause the video and try to solve this one. See what the addition subtraction differences are between each number. Maybe see if there's a, a multiplication division difference between each number. And then see if you can spot a pattern. So pause the video and give this a go. You done that? So let's have a look at the differences between our numbers in this pattern here. So first off, the addition subtraction differences. As we go from 2 to 3, we've gone up by a 1. As we go from 3 to 5, we've gone up by 2. As we go from 5 to 8, we've gone up by 3. And as we go from 8 to 12, we've gone up by a 4. So you can actually see a pattern here that's occurring here. We have an increasing amount we're going up each time. It's going up by one extra every time. So let's continue this pattern. Where next one, we're going to go up by a 5. So 12 plus 5. And next, we're going to go up by 6. So 12 plus 5 is equal to 17. 17 plus 6 is equal to 23. So a little trickier is keep having a look at the difference between those numbers there and you'll be fine, okay? It's going to get you 90% of the way there. So what about another example? So what about this one? We start with a 2, then we have a 4, then we have 12, then we have 48. What is the next value in this sequence here? So why don't you pause the video and give this a go? You've done that? No? How'd you go? All right. Let's see what the actual pattern is here. So from 2 to 4, we're going up by 2. From 4 to 12, we're going up by 8. As we go from 12 to 48, we're going up by 36. So I can't see a really great pattern right here. What about we have a look down here? Okay, so we're going to see about multiplying now. Uh, 2 times 2 is equal to 4. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. 12 times 4 is equal to 48. There you go, we've got a pattern. We're multiplying by an increasing amount each time, increasing by one. So for the next value, we're gonna multiply by five. 48 multiplied by five is 240. Okay, cool. So what about now we have a look at another type of pattern? Okay, so let's have a look at another sequence here. We start with a one, then we have a one, then we have a two, next we have a three, next we have a five, Next, we have an 8. What are the next two values in this particular sequence here? Now, you might even know this particular sequence. And if you do, don't keep it to yourself. Let us know in the comments. Put it in capital letters. Yell it 30 times, okay? Be the most loud about it, okay? So what's happening with this particular sequence here? So we can have a look and see, once again, are we going up by a regular amount? Now, you can see, as we go from 1 to 1, we've gone up by 0. And as we go from 1 to 2, we've gone up by 1. As we go from 2 to 3, we've gone up by 1. As we go from 3 to 5, we've gone up by 2. Uh, there's no great pattern here that you can see as we add there. What about if we look for multiplication patterns? Well, let's have a look. Uh, 1 times 1 is equal to 1. Uh, 1 times 2 is equal to 2. Uh, 2 times 1 and a half is equal 
two, three. There's no great pattern that's really coming out there that you can see. So let's look somewhere else with this. This type of pattern is slightly different. This is the next type of pattern you should look for. It's where the numbers in the pattern interrelate with one another to give the next uh, part of the sequence here. And I'm going to show you what I mean by this. One plus one is equal to two. One plus two is equal to three. See what's happening here? Two plus three is equal to five. Three plus five is equal to the next answer, which is eight. Five plus eight is equal to 13. Eight plus 13, that gives us the next answer, 21. Now, do you know the name of this sequence yet? I'm gonna keep it to myself, but you might wanna check the comments to see if you can see what it is. All right, this is a very famous type of sequence here. But it's where we actually have numbers in the sequence relating to one another to give the next part along of the sequence. So it's another one to watch out for if all the other ones haven't worked so far. All right, so let's have a look at another sequence here. So we're going to start with 2 over 3. The next value that we have is 3 over 5. The next value that we have is going to be 4 over 7. What are the next two values in our sequence here? So I'm going to give you a little hint here. You can do four fraction sequences exactly as you do for any other sequence. That is, it may be an arithmetic sequence where you go up by a regular amount each time, or it might be a geometric sequence, anything like this. But for this particular one, I've decided to go a little bit different. Now, for this particular uh, sequence here, maybe pause the video and see if you can work it out, because this one's a bit of a trick. And what you're going to do is you're going to separate the top values from the bottom values and look for different patterns in these. So as we go from two to three, we've gone up by a one. And as we go from three to four, we've also gone up by a one. On the bottom here, from three to five, we've gone up by two. And from five to seven, we've also gone up by two. So let's continue this along. Two, three, four, five, six, going up by ones. And on the bottom here, we're going up by twos. Three, five, seven, nine, 11. And that's the next two values in this particular sequence here. Just watch out for these sometimes. They are a bit of a trick they sometimes put in there. Uh, you know, okay. So what about one last one of these? Okay, so what about this one? We start with 8 over 10. The next one we have is 5 over 11. The next one is 2 over 12. What are the next two values in this particular sequence here? So once again, we're going to pause the video, maybe give it a go, and we're going to then separate the top and the bottom values of our fraction. So let's do that. As we go from 8 to 5, we're going to subtract 3. As we go from 5 to 3, we're also going to subtract 3. So there's a bit of a pattern there. Let's have a look at the bottom here. As we go along from 10 to 11, we're adding 1, and 11 to 12, we're also adding 1. So there's a bit of a pattern there. Let's follow this along. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Uh, 12 plus 1 is equal to 13. So there's the next value in our sequence. Next we have minus 1 minus 3, which is going to be minus 4, and 13 plus 1, which is going to be 14. So there you have it, a couple of simple tips and tricks on how you can go through to find the next term in a sequence of numbers. If you like this video, please remember hit the like button and maybe subscribe. And if you really want to support the Tech Math channel, what about you consider becoming a patron? Even buying some of my dodgy merch, check out the link in the description below. You will not get much better merch than the Tech Math channel sells. Anyway, if you've lasted this long, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.